Good afternoon. This is Pastor Jim Hardy, pastor of First Presbyterian Church in Lockport, New York. Today is the 26th of March. I'm going to uh, be reading a passage from the book uh, Return to the Lord, Daily Devotions uh, for Lent. This is written by Eric Rodeman. Um, members of uh, my church have been using this book to reflect on Lent. I'm just going to read a, a little bit from this. Perhaps uh, there are some words that should be reserved for use exclusively for the praise of the Lord our God. The words awe and awesome might be a couple of examples. In our everyday speech, awesome can equally describe a beautiful sunrise, our children's good grades, or the latest trick from the skateboarder who lives up the street. In our advertising-driven world, there where everything gets expressed in the most uh, superlative uh, forms possible, awe and awesome lose their significance. Our God is a great and awesome God, Deuteronomy 7.21, who has a great and awesome name, uh, Psalm 99.3, does great and awesome things, First Chronicles 17.21, uh, is clothed with awesome majesty, uh, Job 37.22. The... Um, the word awesome, you know, we, we often use these, uh, this word uh, to describe things or to, to celebrate things or in response to uh, the things. Uh, my, today, uh, I responded to an email from someone in the church. I, I, they uh, had done something, and I said, awesome, thank you, awesome. Uh, I, I often respond to, to favors that people have done by saying awesome, but the word awe is, is different than awesome for me. Awe is something when you have an experience that is luminous, that uh, that is transcendent, that is beyond ourselves, where we almost feel like we have an auto, out of uh, body experience. To me, that's uh, that's awe. Awe can be experienced uh, in God's creation, maybe looking at a, a sunrise or a sunset for sure, um, but also uh, awe can be experienced in worship when we are. Uh, bowing before God, and we are experiencing God in God's most, uh, in, a, in, a, in a most uh, intimate way with God, where we are maybe are in prayer, or we're listening to music, or we're surrounded by our community of faith, and we we feel a sense of connection to God. That can be an awe-inspiring experience. It can connect us to to God in a new and a in a more powerful way. Uh, God can be uh, at that moment. Uh, we, we feel as if God is within us uh, or near us or uh, very present, and that can inspire a sense of, uh, a sense of awe. Um, this author uh, suggests that uh, we uh, should look at uh, Psalm, uh, Psalm 22 when, we're, uh, when we are uh, thinking about the awe-inspiring nature of God and um, uh, in, um, uh, in, in uh, Psalm uh, Psalm 22, we read, You who fear the Lord, praise him, all you offspring of Jacob, glorify him, and stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel, stand in awe of God. Let us pray. Help me to reflect upon the true awesomeness of your word and works, O Lord, that all other things may fall into better perspective for me. Amen.